Hello and welcome back. Today I want to attempt something that I've been planning for a while. A glass hot air balloon here on the Matt Yossa channel. I'll start by blowing out an ultra thin bubble. I need to be careful not to apply too much pressure as these can break very easily. Glass is naturally very heavy, so I feel this may be the only way to get it light enough to be airborne. However, it's so fragile, I'm having difficulty even removing it from my blow tube. Even without tightening the claws, they still bust through the side. And so I'll have to adjust my methods to apply a more delicate approach. You'll see the glass melts down very quickly when you blow the wall thickness out to this extreme level. It can also become flexible as well. With the globes, you can slightly push into the side with your finger without breaking it, and it'll pop back out like a button. And lastly, we seem to lose our thermal insulative properties, as there's really nothing there to hold heat. And that's what worries me, as isolating the warm air from the cold is the main mechanism for flight. And now I have helped launch a hot air balloon once. I wasn't a passenger, but I remember the whole process. We laid out the balloon deflated, and the operator began filling it with hot air using a burner. As it filled up, it eventually began to rise and lift off the ground. And then he would keep giving it a little bit of heat to keep it stable. And then once the passengers were in and ready to go, he gave it a good burst and started lifting off. So sort of the same thing here, except it's already inflated and full of cold air. So I'll have to heat up that air, causing it to expand, becoming less dense. That is if I can make the balloon itself without breaking it. I accidentally pushed my thumb through it. It's difficult to use even my hands. That's the most delicate tool I have. Just to note, this didn't hurt. I pulled my hand back in surprise. I wasn't expecting it to break. Of course, normally for safety, you don't want to grab the glass unless it's been sitting on your bench for a while. This is just a special case since the globe is cooling down ultra quickly. The walls are so thin, it's almost like there's no inside or outside to the globe. It's just one membrane of glass. But now, how heavy is it? It comes in at exactly four grams. That's a little lighter than a nickel. Will that be enough? Honestly, at this point, I don't know. But I do know I have to make a stand in order to elevate it. I can't put the flame inside of the balloon because it'll run out of oxygen. And so I'm going to place it below the balloon using the same hole that the air is going to use to expand out of as it heats up. I'm not sure if that's going to cause a problem. It might blow itself out. But I've been wanting to do this project for years now ever since I made my oil wick, the capillary candle. Since then, I've been finding a lot of uses for it, mainly things scientific in nature. But now I'm flicking the molten glass forward to use kinetic force in order to bend that straight edge into more of a curved hoop, a circle. I normally make use of the basic forces for my work, kinetic with my hands, gravity, Heat is a tool as well, just like the others. Here I'm attaching the legs to the stand. I'm heating the leg and the stand both to molten temperatures and attaching them in the flame. The glass will flow together and make a very solid connection. It'll be fully melted in. But now for aesthetic and educational purposes, I'm going to go ahead and melt the end of this leg and bend it around to create a bridge between both legs. <clears throat> Hello? Hey dude, I'm just doing some uh, 
this video. Uh, what time do you want me to be over there? Uh, now? Okay, let me just do a couple more connections and break a piece of glass and we'll be right out. Sometimes it can be hard to fit glass working into a busier schedule. It can take a while for the glass to heat up, for the kiln to heat up. Sometimes you get halfway into a project, you have it very, very molten, and it's just not efficient to take a break. But in most cases, you can set your work in the kiln and come back to it later. And even though these digital kilns can run themselves, it's a good idea to turn it off before you leave. Now I'm going back into each of those connections from both sides to re-solidify that whole area so it flows more evenly and looks very nice. By using the bridge, you can see it's holding that leg in place. So as it solidifies, it doesn't tilt into a weird angle. The bridging technique can be pretty helpful. It's not always necessary. The connection I had was solid enough. I won't put this in the kiln either, as it's not actually turned on. I'm thinking it should survive. Seven mil rods usually do. I'll go ahead and snip the legs and the bridge off. To level the stand, I'll come down to eye level and make tiny snips to adjust it until it's just right. And now I'll carefully place the globe onto the stand. I won't attach the fuel source yet. If the globe can't lift its own weight, then there wouldn't be any need to. The wicks themselves only weigh half a gram. So depending on how much heat I need, it might not be too much extra weight. But it's not looking like enough. I'll have to add in some more oil lamps to see if it'll work. And so I can't fit any more under the globe. I'm gonna hold a couple of them sideways to flow a very rich flame. I'm not sure if you can do this with a normal wick, but these are made of tubes, so they still function as liquid through a tube would. So by holding it down more at an angle, gravity's pulling more fuel through. However, it's too much, and so we get a lot of black smoke, which is soot. It's swirling around quite a bit. It seems to rise up to the top of the globe and then fall back down along the inside walls before coming out at the bottom which is creating a convection current inside the globe, causing the smoke to swirl around in circles. Very cool. And so it never took off. I could feel so much heat rising through the top that it was almost like the balloon wasn't even there. It wasn't insulating heat, and so the surrounding air was just rising around it. But I'm not gonna give up. Instead, I'm gonna go bigger. A larger balloon means more air to work with, so that may be the difference I need. I flared open a larger 26 millimeter tubing to connect up to my blow tube. I'll heat that connection up for a few more seconds and then give it a slight pull to create that tapered funnel shape in between the two tubes. And then I'll go in for a quick flame cut to create a small section. Before I blow it out, I'll heat up just the end of it and give it a tiny puff to balance out that wall. And now from doing this episode, I noticed some more strange properties from going to this size of vessel. As you're applying heat and attempting to blow, it'll actually blow back at you pretty hard with that expanding pressure. It also takes a lot of pressure as well so I can puff pretty hard without it breaking. Lastly, it's a little springy. I don't know if it's the air compressing or the walls expanding, but I can blow just a little bit of air inside and then it'll push right back at me. I'm starting out with one candle and you'll see very quick it blew itself out. I did lift it a little bit into the vessel, but I didn't think it would go out that quickly. As I mentioned before, that heated air is expanding out and seems to be causing a problem. I didn't even lift it that time, so I'm not sure what to do now. Besides accidentally knocking it over ah, and breaking it. I broke it. 
And now, I don't like to easily give up. That is one thing Glass and YouTube has taught me over the years. Progress takes time, progress takes patience, and progress takes problems, accidents. Things have to go wrong in order to understand what's needed to make things go right. Because of my mistakes, I've learned how to correct my techniques to have better results. And so to get some better results, to figure out why it's not working, I'm gonna employ a more scientific method. My candle wick is burning 0.01 grams of fuel every 13 seconds. I'll deduct that from the next test, which is gonna measure lift. I spent a great deal of time creating the lightest vessel I could, which comes in right under one gram. And very quickly, we generate about 0 0.07 grams of lift, and then it just bottoms out right there. And so it seems as if the heat is just bleeding right through. With these thin walls, there's nothing to hold on to it. Glass really isn't the best thermal insulator either. Compared to organic materials, it's actually quite conductive. But compared to metals, it's quite the opposite. And so with more heat, there was more lift, about 0.10 or 15 grams. But you can see, once I stop applying the heat, it bounces back very quickly. For this to work, I need to create a larger differential of heat on the inside so that the colder, denser air on the outside will fall and push the lighter vessel up. And now I was originally going for a hot air balloon but this design reminds me a lot more of a sky lantern. Sort of the same concept here, but made of paper, a bit larger and carries its own fuel source. I was gonna attach a fuel source, but at this point, I'll just be happy to see it get off the ground. Besides that, the paper is much more insulative for heat, however, burns very easily. And so it can't take nearly as much heat as I'm giving these vessels here. But lastly, to get the most advantage I can, I'm blowing the walls out so thin they weigh half the weight of printer paper. And so I was hoping with enough heat, I wouldn't need such a large vessel, but I didn't factor in everything, the conductivity. But now with more space, we did get more lift off a single candle about 0.23 grams compared to 0.7. But besides space and heat, there are other factors as well. Colder weather will create a bigger differential in temperature, giving you more lift. Placement of the flame is important. I'm having some difficulties getting it inside the vessel. I believe when the flame is in the right spot, it not only generates heat inside the vessel, but pulls air up from below, creating an updraft. Lastly, in these laboratory conditions, I don't have any wind. So for my last attempt, I made my largest and lightest glass balloon I could. 26 grams in weight, which is a little less than two empty aluminum cans. In addition to two shop fans on both sides, placed very far away on low to stimulate a natural wind. My theory is that the wind will dissipate the heat pocket that is kind of bleeding out to the outside and allow the colder air to push closer into the vessel. And so after lowering the flame on the second attempt, I actually had some pretty good hopes here as I see the vessel shaking about, but unfortunately, still nothing. And so even in the face of failure, I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna keep working on this project, this project I've named Boraloon. I'm gonna attempt Boraloon again when the conditions are more favorable in winter, so about six months from now. The air will be so cold and dense it'll solidify into what we call snow. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it, but share this video as well. It'll help it rise up in the digital environment. You, the viewers, are the flames for these videos. So help me ascend here on the Matt Yasa channel.